Welcome back everyone to the lecture about applied biomedical analysis. This part is about image registration. What's image registration? Image registration is the process of transforming two images into one coordinate system. And technically that means actually two things. It's namely finding a transformation of bringing one image into the coordinate system of another image. And second of all, applying this transformation. And this is also often called uh, image fusion. So you see here in this image, so you see here in these two images, there is the same structure in both images. And so we can likely take this corresponding structure, which is image twice in these two tiles, in order to figure out a transformation which brings these two images together in one coordinate system. This is what image registration is doing. And depending on which, which software you work or who you talk to, you will realize that there is different terms for actually the same thing. So usually we transform one image from one coordinate system into the coordinate system of another image. So we basically have one fixed image, that's why it's called like that, or the reference image or the source image, something like this. And we try to bring the other image into the same coordinate system, which is the target image or the moving image. So in terms like that, you find then in, in softwares which uh, do this. And furthermore, there are different approaches of how to do this. So for example, one of the most, let's say, efficient ways of doing it is finding corresponding points and structures, interest points in these different images, like you see here with the crosses, and then filling a system of linear equations with the coordinates and finding the perfect or the optimal solution for bringing these two images together in one coordinate system. And there's a potential alternative, so algorithms also exist intensity-based, and they basically take the two images, overlap them as they are, and compute kind of an, an error between them, for example, the mean squared error. And then they move this image a bit, and they do this um, at, in, in, a, in the image pyramid I introduced to you last week. And then you, by, by doing this a couple of times and finding the, the, the best way towards a global optimum allows you at some point to reduce the mean square error between these two images, which allows you to find the right transformation to bring these images together. And there is different, there's different ways of misaligning images. So let's assume we have a two-channel image. We have some nuclei over here, and uh, around the nuclei there is some uh, nuclear envelope, and we image these two with two different fluorescent markers. So we have in magenta and in green these two structures and two channels in an image, in a theoretical image. If these two channels are translated to each other, it may look like this. And you can then apply an algorithm which finds the perfect translation vector in order to correct for this. Furthermore, they can be rotated. Furthermore, they can be isometrically scaled. So that means in all directions there is a factor applied making these things smaller or larger. So the images are scaled. But scaling can also mean that the, that the factor is different in different directions, which makes it, of course, more complicated to figure out the right transformation for correcting this. Last but not least, shearing. So that basically means that you have kind of such a, such a movement within your image, shearing the image apart or one of the images apart and correcting for this might be even more complicated. And when you bring these different ways of misaligning images together, you, you have another some more terms describing the combinations of these misalignments. So let's assume the one image is just moved, it's just translated to the other, then we are talking about a translation or a translation registration which has to be applied afterwards. If a translation may be present and a rotation, then we are talking about a so-called rigid transform. If we find or if we realize that the image is translated, rotated, and isometrically scaled, then we find terms like the, geomet the geomet geometric similar transformation, or some, some, some software also calls it the geometry transform. I'm not sure if this term is correct, but we find these. And if you have also non-isometric scaling and shearing there, um, then we are talking about the so-called affine transform. Why am I telling you this? Because depending on which software you work, you find in these uh, different pulldowns, for example, you find uh, the selection of the, of the transformation you would like to correct. And um, a general hint is always, if you, have, if you observe a, a, a misalignment, which is just a translation, then try to correct for that with just a translation. Don't use the affine transform, even though the affine transform also contains the translation. The idea is a bit, give the software 
the minimum possibility to do something wrong to get the best result and also to get the result in the fastest way out. So that's basically a hint when using software like that. Furthermore, on top of this, so so far we were always talking about applying a transformation to the whole image. So basically all the pixels are transformed in the same way. And there is also a transformation which is then the so-called non-widget transform or um, a deformable image transformation. Um, which can also be present, especially in microscopy, you really observe it sometimes. And maybe you see it here in the bottom image. There is obviously in this region, in these two images, there is a, a local misalignment. So the, the, the misalignment transformation of pixels may be different depending on regions in the image. And that's then we are talking about the formable image registration or sometimes also to refer to as particle image velocimetry or optical flow measurement. And these transformations are typically quantified or visualized with vector fields. So you see here in this image uh, colored lines. And the color here in this case uh, represents the displacement in pixels. So here in the very center of this region, pixels are transformed to the left or to the right in this case. <laughs> in, in this region by 25 pixels. And the more you go away from that region, this displacement goes down and becomes zero some, somewhere outside. And you may wonder, okay, what, what do we do with that? It allows us, for example, in video sequences, it allows us to measure the flow of objects or the, the motion of cells in a general image perspective point of view. So we are not tracking objects here. So we are not following individual nuclei, even though we could, right? We are following the whole structure, uh, pixel by pixel, basically, and summarize that in a visualization of a vector field. So this is what in microscopy, most people um, talk about optical flow measurement or uh, particle image velocimetry. In medical imaging, we usually people call it deformable image registration. And here you see an example from the from from a clinical perspective. So this is an MRI data set, and I outlined here a region um, that's the base of the tongue. So it's so it's not so the patient was actually a colleague of mine imaged in the MRI, <laughs> and uh, we outlined the base of the tongue. And we asked uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the volunteer to open her mouth um, and then the tongue is basically falling to the back. So we wanted to, to measure the misalignment of these two our eyes, which is obviously a local thing, which is obviously not a global transformation of the whole image because only the tongue and the mouth are moving. Um, and this is quite relevant when you think about uh, radiotherapy and there's a, a tumor, for example, in this region. Then, if we want to hit this tumor precisely, then we have to we have to take these kind of transformations into account in order to make an ROI and an outline of an anatomical structure um, precise, or to figure out how precise we can do these things. But the as a term you often find in microscopy, more and more actually in the recent years, stitching. So when the structure we are looking at, so we are looking at here, we are looking at the mouth brain. When the structure we are, we are imaging is too big for our microscope, so the, the, the field of view of the microscope is not large enough to capture the whole scene, the whole sample, then we have to take several images, tiles, and then stitch these tiles together afterwards. Especially when this image data becomes very big, it becomes a problem. I was talking a bit about tiling and big data last week. So when you look here, for example, this is uh, again also a mouse brain, same image as before, and you see here that with, with typical image J functionality, um, the developers were here showing some interest points. And the challenge is now to bring these interest points together so that this over so that these two sections taken from the mouse brain, image from the mouse brain, um, fit together in one data set. But technically this is feasible today. I will show you a tool um, where you which you can use for that. Um, I'm just saying that for big data, it is a bit challenging if you work with terabytes of image data. So why is it challenging? Imagine you have a structure elongated a bit in this direction and you would like to image it. You realize it does not fit in the field of view. So you realize that you have to take eight field of views and have to image them. So this is how you basically set up your microscope. And then you click on run. And when you are done with imaging, you realize that the microscope was to some degree doing what it was supposed to do, but <laughs> um, not precisely. And there are, there are many reasons for that. So it's not just the microscope stage does not move as you would like to. It also has something to do that when light propagates through thick tissues, it is sometimes not going straight. 
um, because refractive index differences make the light a bit propagate in, in nonlinear ways. Um, and then afterwards, what you get in your images may look like that. So you actually have acquired um, tiles from these positions and not from the positions as you configured it. And each of these tiles is uh, half of your computer memory, or let's say a quarter of your computer memory. So you cannot put all eight tiles in the computer and um, register them and stitch them. Um, you have to do this basically starting from one tile of interest at the moment to the neighbor tiles, and maybe tile by tile. And from each tile to each neighboring tile, and all, always do this pairwise. And when you can do this pairwise, and you can do this from different tiles, um, you don't have to have the whole data set with all eight tiles or with all 1,000 tiles um, in computer memory. You only have pairs or have to have pairs of them. Um, and this is actually the thing which makes the, the, the big image data um, stitching possible. Um, at the end, you take all these transformations which have been um, uh, determined between these different tiles and you still um, have to... Um, equalize a bit the error between them in order to figure out uh, how all these tiles fit together in the very best way. And then when you have aligned all your tiles, then you should still do some error quantification. So you see here, for example, how these overlapping tiles and the interest points in them are then taken to measure, for example, an average distance between the interest points of two different images in order to have some estimation of, of quality you, you, you gain through the uh, stitching. And depending on what kind of registration you were applying, um, if you were just doing a translation or if you just were, or if you were applying an, a non-rigid transform, um, you will then see that the errors are different. First of all, the theoretical error, so the, the, the theoretical, the, the, Optimum of what you could achieve when applying a non rigid transform is, of course, smaller and better than when just applying a translation because it is not just a translation. There is, as I said earlier, the light is propagating. Um, <laughs> um, light is propagating through the tissue and it is not going the linear way, so that's why we have to actually um, theoretically apply a non rigid transform. Um, nevertheless, um, also, a translation may make sense if you can accept an error of something like eight or nine pixels. So that has something to do with how precise do you have to be in order to answer your scientific question. And it has also something to do with how much computational resources are you willing to invest in order to find the best, the optimal transformation. That's so far for image registration. And I will show you next how to do this in Fitchy.